Good morning. My name is Santiago and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My voice is a little gone. I've been sick all week. I don't have COVID. I've had to get like three tests this week. I just have a really, really bad cold. Anyways, as the title shows, today is the day of white coat and I'm feeling so, so excited. I already feel like I've been inducted into the medical field. Like I've been sharing with you guys, the last month has been base camp. We've been doing a lot of medical stuff, a lot of studying, but really getting CPR trained, Narcan trained. We've had simulations, we've done intubations, we've done literally a lot of things. So I already feel like I'm a, I'm a part of this profession. But still, today is a big day. It is the day I will get my white coat. I mean, I already have it. <laughs> Today is the day that my society dean will put on my white coat and formally uh, recognize and symbolically put me into the medical profession. So it is a big day. It's a monumental step. It's kind of like a rite of passage for all medical students. So nonetheless, I am excited. Also, my mom and my sister and my brother, um, one is missing, but my family's here. Jeremy's also here. And yeah, I'm just excited to have white coat. I do, unfortunately. <laughs> I have to go to class from nine to like 12 or something. So I do have to be there in the morning. And then after that, we have our like rehearsal and to like go over like white coat history. And then we have our white coat ceremony. I'll bring you guys along for the history portion of it and maybe for rehearsal, but definitely I will bring you guys along for the actual white coat ceremony and to see me get a white coat symbolically and figuratively because again, I already have it. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Yes, I know, we're back in my laundry room. I had made a promise to myself that I wouldn't film in here anymore, that I was just gonna do vlog style, but that obviously did not happen. And the reason why was because of that cold that I mentioned to y'all in the beginning of this video. As you might be able to hear, I still have that cold and it is the worst thing, the worst thing that has ever happened to me. <laughs> it literally almost prevented me from attending my own white coat ceremony. So let me give you the tea. As you can see in this clip, I obviously attended the white coat ceremony practice thing where we got more information as to how the white coat ceremony was going to proceed. I was there, it was happening, we were chill. But then during the middle of the proceeding, this was like around like one o'clock by the way, so like after I had attended all the morning like teaching sessions, I felt a cough coming and I didn't want to cough on my classmates because it was this really tight and closed auditorium. So I quickly ran out of the room and kind of had a coughing um, ordeal like in the middle of this like like lobby thing I recognized that I needed water so I stepped out with like watery eyes like red eyes obviously because I had just been coughing from this like sore scratchy throat that I had and that was when that was when one of the staff members for the medical school stopped me and asked me if I was okay. So I responded like, yeah, like I just have a scratchy throat. Like, do you know where there's water? Like I just need, I just need a sip of water and I promise you I will be okay. But as soon as I said that, she recognized that if you have a sore throat, if you have a cough, if you have like these list of symptoms, you're technically not supposed to be on campus because they are afraid that these might be symptoms of COVID. However, what they don't recognize and what I also didn't know at the time is that these symptoms have to have arisen within the last 48 hours to be marked as like new symptoms, like symptoms that you're not used to. Obviously, I'm not used to having a sore throat or a cough, so I just thought in general these were new symptoms, but it's technically those 48 hours that really matter. She directs me inside the building. This is where I'm supposed to get water. So I quickly run inside, because again, like I still have this urge to cough, I still have this scratchy throat. I go drink water, I still feel like I have to cough. So then I run into the uh, men's restroom, I like find a stall and just like hack out whatever it is that I need to do in order to quit coughing. However, at this point when I come out, she is actually waiting for me. So I go up to her, maybe like thinking that she's gonna give me more information as to what I've missed during this like uh, practice reception. But instead, what I'm met with is, so I talked to the director and because you have this cough, you're actually not allowed to attend white coat ceremony. Excuse me? 
<laughs> Excuse me? So I respond, I totally understand. You guys are just trying to be safe with COVID. I've taken three COVID tests at this point. I don't have COVID. I slept with the window open. I have a cough. I have a sore throat because I'm sick, but I am not sick from COVID. To which she says, sorry, I already talked to the director. You won't be able to attend the white coat ceremony. If you would like, you can live stream this event with your family. Excuse me, what? I'm supposed to live stream an event that I won't even be able to attend anymore? <laughs> What? And not only that, I had my mom and my siblings drive from Las Vegas to Los Angeles to attend this event and they won't be able to see me cross the stage because I have a cold? Now this is where symptoms get arbitrary in terms of like those being the end all be all for if you can be on campus. Obviously a lot of you have had colds or you know coughs or sore throats not attributed to COVID and this is one of those situations. So I was not having it. I said I appreciate you letting me know but if I really can attend ceremony can I talk to someone like what can I do? So then I'm directed to talk to the director who basically tells me like yeah sorry homie you're not gonna be able to cross the stage. You can live stream the event. I was enraged. Like when I tell you I was mad, I was stinking mad. I had not been told a thing while I was in class for a whole week with this cough, with this sore throat. I had not been told anything all morning, but right before, like 30 minutes before, we're supposed to move into Royce Hall to proceed with the ceremony for me to walk the stage is when they had the audacity <laughs> to say that I won't be able to cross the stage. I was so hurt. I was very hurt. <laughs> and I am a little emotional when I think about it because I truly thought that in that moment I wasn't going to cross stage. And I probably wouldn't have if I hadn't quickly hopped on our uh, group me that I have with the rest of the 173 students that I get to call my classmates and told them that in that five, six minutes I had left the room to go cough and drink water that I had been told that I wouldn't be able to attend the white coat ceremony. If I hadn't texted, it them, texted them, I probably wouldn't have walked for my white coat ceremony. Luckily, as soon as the ceremony was over, I had a ton of classmates come join me and really, again, be my advocates, asking me like, what's going on? You better walk across the stage. Like, there's no way you're not gonna walk with the stage with us. Like, what is going on? What do you need us to do? Like, what is going on? I literally had like over 20 people come and like, kind of bombard me uh, during the situation, again, with good intentions, but I didn't know what to do because I want to be respectful of the rules. I don't want to get anyone sick with COVID, not that I had COVID. So I was just really um, put in a situation where I wanted to walk this stage, not so much for me, but because I had invited my family out there to see me walk that stage. So yeah, for like 15, 20 minutes, maybe even longer, it's so hard to say. I was put in the situation where people were asking me questions, really pushing me to do this, to do that really just try to figure it out how are we gonna get Santiago on that stage and then that is when one specific classmate I don't want to say anyone's names in case they don't want to be in this video but one specific classmate went and talked to uh, the deans of the medical school and they are associate deans I'm not quite sure what their titles are anyways she talked to two really important people that are part of our uh, medical school as well as my society dean who is responsible for like leading and really um, advocating for my society like a group of 40 to 50 students. She went and go talk to them and uh, she had disappeared for maybe like 10 minutes but when she came back she came with all three and what they essentially did was like interview me to see what was going on. They really asked me questions and what they concluded was that because I have already had again three threats. One, two, three. <laughs> negative COVID test that I probably did not have COVID. But just to be safe, they had me do a rapid antigen test with no swabs that they were doing outside of the reception for people who weren't able to get a negative test before the actual ceremony. So uh, yeah, I quickly ran with my society dean to start that test. And at this point, students are already going into Royce Hall. They're already going in to start the reception, to start the whole ceremony. So there I am with my COVID test with my nose swabs, I'm like doing my nose swabs, like getting the test ready. And as I'm doing it, I'm seeing like classmate after classmate, friend after friend pass by me and they're all like sad for me. They're all waving. They all have their <laughs> hands over their hearts, like wishing me the best of luck, really just being my advocates. And yeah, here I am sitting in this table feeling hella sorry for myself because I couldn't help getting sick. Like it just happened. Like 
Anyways, so it takes about 15 minutes for this test to be done. There I am waiting, waving to my friends, letting them know it's gonna be okay. And as soon as the 15 minutes were over, I ran over to the guy who was like reading the test and making sure you were clear. He saw that I was negative for COVID and rushed me inside the hall. I didn't know what I was doing because I left the end of the practice session because I didn't want to call for my classmates. So I was really confused. I didn't know what to do. I just found the quickest faculty member, which so happened to be the one who originally told me I wouldn't be able to attend. <laughs> oh, so dramatic for what? For what? <laughs> Anyway, she apologizes, you know, she was just doing her job and I told her I also apologize for being a little bit short with her. And we quickly ran into Royce Hall to find my, my idol. And at this point, I was literally the last student to walk in, but it's such a moment for me because as I'm walking in, uh, my mom, you know, I found this out later, but my mom was really sad because she thought she wasn't gonna be able to see me walk that stage. And it wasn't so much that I wouldn't be able to walk across the stage, but she also didn't see me walk across the stage for my college graduation because of COVID. So really this would be the first time I walk across the stage for a major institution as a first gen, you know, family member in my family. So it was really a big deal for my family. They really wanted to see me walk that stage and for me to not have been able to because of a cough that isn't associated associated with COVID. Like that, that's sad. Um, so the minute that she sees me walk, she gets so excited as you can see here. And yeah, she's just so happy. <laughs> I was also really happy as you can tell I was really scared that I wasn't gonna be able to do it here's a better video of it all there's a couple of things that are just so meaningful to me now but I'll point them out at, at the end of this Yeah, I don't need for my life to be this dramatic, but I will forever cherish this video. As you can tell, so many of my classmates get really, really excited to see me uh, enter that room and, you know, just join them in this uh, monumental step in our lives. Uh, you can also see Dr. Lehman, who is my society dean, the person who advocated for me uh, in this situation. She gets really excited and she points towards uh, the associate deans. Uh, to let them know that I did make it, that I am here to attend this session. So yeah, this clip is just so, so meaningful. Eventually, I finally made it to my seat and then we were all told to sit down and then we proceeded with the ceremony. We had a number of speakers, one you know major keynote speaker who shared her, her own story. I actually had to go back and watch it because I was still in so much shock that I even made it into this ceremony that I was really not processing much of what was being said. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was trying to, you know, do my best to listen, but sorry, my camera died. Anyways, after all the speakers, you know, were able to share their experiences and, the, and their words with us, we then proceeded with the actual white coat over each student. This was proceeded with each society dean giving the white coat to the student of their specific societies. So, of course, for me, this was uh, Dr. Lehman, which I'll show you guys here. Santiago Godinho Rosales University. You better work. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> That was so special to me and I was really holding back tears because again, it had just been such a stressful couple of hours leading up to that moment. Once everybody crossed the stage, we had our Hippocratic Oath, which I'll show you a snippet of it here. Please stand. I would like the class of 2025 to join me in reciting the oath. Today, I begin my training to become a physician, a noble profession. This went on for about two minutes. I won't share the entire clip just because it's kind of long, but you can always look up the Hippocratic Oath 
and see what it is that we swore like an oath to. It's not so much swearing an oath as much as just recognizing the role that we're taking on as physicians and making a promise to ourselves really, but also to the medical community that we are gonna uphold these values and really be the best physicians that we can be. After that, we went ahead and took pictures with our huge class, with our different societies. And then of course, as Latinos, took pictures as Latinos and then as Mexicans. And I also got pictures with my uh, family and Jeremy. And then because I had this migraine from the stress, I ended up wanting just to leave early. So we did, made it back home, rested for a little bit. And then we had this magnificent, magnificent uh, Thai food from a restaurant here in Los Angeles. It was so good and really just a great way just to wrap up the night. <laughs> I know, I really, really, really wanted to vlog for you guys and show you more behind the scenes, more activities behind the, the ceremony with my classmates and get some interviews and all of that. But of course, of course, <laughs> my telenovela of a life just didn't allow it. it. It gave me the dramatics instead for no reason, for no reason. <laughs> I'm hoping to do more vlog style videos and hopefully the dramatics in my life will not prevent me from doing so. Um, so please stay tuned for those. If there's also any other type of video you would like to see, please let me know down below in the comment section. Again, my name is Santiago. If you're new here, I am an MS1. I do live a bit of a dramatic life for no reason. <laughs> and if you haven't subscribed, you can do so down below. Hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. And yeah, I hope you get to join me on this journey. It's still uh, a long one, <laughs> but I've officially made that first step that so many medical students look forward to. So I guess, I guess it's real now. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining me today. As always, please take care, get vaccinated, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. I'm still sick. <laughs> Adios.